them is the most current issue which is the performance of the party in the um, you know last um, elections these are the uh, council elections um, just uh, a lot of people seem to be worried that the party is losing popularity in areas which are considered your strongholds uh, not at all mm. that is what uh, the, the first value could be mm. uh, Luchi. but honestly speaking uh, this is nothing new we know that uh, ruling parties, especially corrupt ruling parties, mm. those parties that really have nothing much to offer, tend to focus on one buying people mm. towards the general elections mm. to paint a picture that uh, they are uh, still strong. Mm. And that's a psychological problem because mm. they know that they are not strong. They mm. know that they've destroyed the economy. Mm. So they play around with uh, localized elections and, uh, and making sure that uh, they can wear that face that they're still strong. Mm. They are not. Mm. Is, is, has that happened before? Yes, it has happened. If you remember before the 2011 general elections, the MMD in office in government was winning by-elections almost everywhere. Mm. The PF and us were losing by-elections in almost everywhere into 2011. Also, PF lost about 22, 23 MPs to MMD in government towards 2011 elections. Mm. But the people of Zambia were decided already. Mm. When the election came, the MMD lost the election. Mm. Between 2011 and 20, between 2011 and 2016, PF won by elections in Western province, for example. Let's pick Western province as, as one example. They won Mangango parliamentary by election. They won Mulovezi parliamentary by election where I was really attacked, viciously attacked. They won a, a couple of wards. They had Mongu Central parliamentary election, uh, sorry, parliamentary seat. Mm. They had three parliamentary seats in Western province. I'm talking of PF. Mm. When we went to 2016 elections, there was no sign that there was PF there. They were wiped out completely. Mm. And that's the way it is, because in a localized election, you can manipulate voters, you can send milli milli, you can push money on the queues, you can abuse DMMU. And, and, and give a semblance that uh, you are popular when you are not popular. Mm. It's self-deception. Mm. I can give you an, another area. COVID-19 is being abused, whereby we are also supposed to, all political parties are supposed to observe health guidelines. Mm. The PF are not. Mm. And they go out campaigning, we are not allowed to campaign freely. Some of us are not even allowed to move freely. And then, an election is held, somehow the ECZ has forgotten their duty to make sure that elections are free and fair. And they allow all the hunky-punky going on, and the ruling party like PF, which has delivered nothing, says they've won an election. They're not winning elections. They are deceiving themselves. Mm -hmm. Lastly, on this point, I want to say, people keep on saying, Luchi, HH has lost, UPND has lost. They keep on saying UPND, HH has lost. The one who is losing is the people of Zambia. Mm. It's the children of Zambia who are not in school. It's those who have no jobs. They've all lost, we've all lost. So this is a collective perception of loss, I would like to put it that way. Mm. I don't consider it a loss to a political party or to HH. It's the people of Zambia that are being cheated. They are the ones that are losing the opportunity to have a better leadership, giving them opportunities, jobs, education, mm. business. Mm. It is the people that are losing. Mm. And until people realize that it's not HH losing, it is them losing, it's us losing, mm. then they'll stand aside. When they realize it's us losing, they'll work together, mm. as we've done before, mm. to deliver independence, mm. to deliver multipartism mm. in 1991. Mm. We must work together mm. going forward. Thank you, you. you don't think that there is need to change your strategy then? And I say this because, you know, some people say that you're... An, and I can understand currently, I can understand the situation currently because of yes. COVID-19, yes. but I still have to ask the question yes. that you, people say that you've lost, um, you're not on the ground anymore, that you're not speaking to people in the rural areas. I want to give you an example. So uh, this is somebody who is on Twitter. His name is Clem Otivate. And he says that UP, UPND need to give out the manifesto and not this 10-point plan. They need to localize it, make it to suit the Zambian local man, simplify it to the point. Someone else says, I personally think uh, that 
HH has been misled by a large number of people on social media. The massive voters do not subscribe to hearsay. They want grassroot work and involvement. We take advice, yeah. which in the first place, yeah. we take advice. Any advice must be listened to. Mm. Positive, depending on where you sit, mm. in favor, we must listen to it. Mm. Advice that may not be in favor of what is obtaining or happening, we too must take. Mm. That too must be taken. Mm. That's very, very important. That's the difference we also bring to the table. But the issue here is that uh, we are aware that uh, the conditions have changed. We are aware that uh, in 2016 there was no such social media penetration. Mm. It was not there. Mm. Everybody must take advantage of technology. Mm. That's a fact. Mm. It is also true that we must reach out to the people. And that's why we need all our people, all those who pro support change, mm. must get involved in their localities. Mm. HH can't be everywhere all the time. Mm. They sometimes we forget. There sometimes we forget. Mm -hmm. Let's give you an example of Western Province. I have been to by elections since 2016. Save the time I was in prison. The longer time I was in prison, 127 days. I went to the Sesheke by election. I'm sure you remember. Mm -hmm. We won in a very very brutal election. I went to the Mangango chairman. Sorry, not Mangango. Kaoma chairman mm -hmm. elections. We won. And that's where our dear young Lawrence Banda was killed in cold blood. And nobody has been arrested. I was there. We won. I was in a ward called Shikombe Ward in Kaoma. I'm talking of after 2017, after my arrest, we won. I was in Nangula by election in Luena constituency. We won. So people forget that. I was in, uh, you know, in Katete by-elections, I was in Lundazi by-elections, I was in Katuba by-elections, I was in a Bahati by-election in Luapula, where I was not allowed to campaign. I was present there for four days. I only had one meeting. The rest of the meeting, I was told I was not allowed to campaign. Which law? No law. People forget all these issues. That's why we must multiply the HHs. Everybody concerned about the situation must be part of the HH change process, UPND Zambia change process. In Chiluvi, Luchi, I went to Chiluvi, I was meant to be there for one week. I was only allowed one meeting, illegally so. I was hounded out like a common criminal. People may have forgotten already, Chiluvi parliamentary by election. And without campaigning, we got almost 6,000 votes. Now, in a general election, it will be a different situation. Mm -hmm. So I think it's important for people to contextualize. Mm -hmm. People must not miss HH being in detention, mm -hmm. HH being tear gassed, HH being beaten and, uh, and like gunned down, like uh, being attempted to be gunned down, mm -hmm. like Sesheke. Mm -hmm. So are, you, are we saying that we want to see more of the Sesheke bloodshed? Are we, are we, we want to see more of Lawrence Banda's shot at? Because of the conditions that have changed, because of the brutality that is there, I ask all the citizens of Zambia who are suffering, and the majority are mm -hmm. suffering, to get engaged, mm -hmm. to be the HHs in Chilubi, to be the HHs in Kaoma, to mm -hmm. be the HHs in Rufunsa, mm -hmm. everywhere. Is that, is that the plan? Is that the, the strategy? I'm not, I'm not sharing that in public. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. So I know that there are... Uh, yeah. You know, as I look in the horizon, I know that there are a few by-elections, yeah. um, you know, because of, uh, sadly, a couple of members of parliament passing yes. away recently. Yes. So I do know that there are a couple of by-elections yes. that are being planned. Is that, is that, will that be part of the strategy going forward? Good question, Luchi. Mm. There's a combination of mm. uh, tactical and strategic maneuvers we are engaging in. Mm. We are evolving mm. because of the brutal oppressive state, mm. one, which is unacceptable, mm. and Zambians must say no to it. But also because of the coronavirus, mm. we have to evolve new strategies, new tactics. Mm. I will not disclose them in public, mm. but we already implement them. Mm. Let me give you one example, mm. which is maybe not a secret. Mm. You are aware that uh, media freedoms have been curtailed, mm. are being curtailed by and large. You are aware of that. Mm. You are aware that radio stations are being attacked. You're fully aware of that. Sinsali radio program, my radio program was disturbed by thugs who are known in Chinsali, but no one is in police detention or detained in Isoka. Since the Isoka saga, we've taken a decision and sent a message that if the police do not protect us in those radio programs, protect the radio station, protect the journalists, protect 
our members protect me, we will defend ourselves in accordance with the Constitution, and that will continue. So I make that as a public position, amongst many other tactical and strategic maneuvers we're engaged in, that if you attack us at a radio station, you attack the journalists, we will defend ourselves. Mm -hmm. And we have since defended ourselves within the remit of the Constitution. We will continue doing that. Mm -hmm. And I want to send a message here to all the people of Zambia. If you are being brutalized by a small number, only a small number of PF thugs at a bus stop, defend yourself. In the market, defend yourself. In a radio station, defend yourself. On a bus, defend yourself. Because that's what the Constitution says. To avoid that chaotic situation, we've asked the police to protect all citizens. To do what we will do when we are in office. To restore the rule of law. To restore order. Just order in society. Mm -hmm. We are sworn in at 10 o'clock in the morning, 10 hours in the morning. By afternoon, there will be law and order. There will be no thuggery. Mm -hmm. And you, a month, yeah. there will be no thuggery. And, and you, don't, you, don't, you don't think that the message of defend yourself might be misconstrued by, by, by political, by your own cadres? To mean what? To mean you can now go around and beat anyone you want? No, they no. shouldn't that. Yeah. They shouldn't do that. Mm. Our message is to defend yourself in accordance to the law. Mm. Because the law says we are all free. Mm. We should not be attacked. We should not be restrained to wear our regalia. Because we have freedom to wear anything we want to wear. We should be free to move. We should be free to talk to Luchi mm. and Phoenix and my dear friend there. Mm. That's what the law says. That's what the Bill of Rights says. So the police are supposed to protect the people. If the police are not protecting the people because they fear to be removed from office, fired from office by the PF, a small clique of the PF, you know, brutal people, then the law, the same law says citizens must defend themselves. Mm -hmm. That is the context in which we're explaining. And it should not be misunderstood. Mm -hmm. We cannot and we will not encourage our members to attack ordinary citizens. Mm -hmm. It is to defend themselves. But we're not just asking our members. We are, dis we are asking the Zambian population, because we've had this too far for too long, they must defend themselves. Mm -hmm. There should be no confusion that mm -hmm. they must become the aggressors. Mm -hmm. No. They are the victims. When the aggressors, a very small number, who are paid corruption money, attack them, they must defend themselves in accordance, in accordance with the law. Mm -hmm. There should be no misunderstanding. Okay. I, I want to move on to some of some other issues. Um, yes. But I, I need you to talk about the manifesto, the party yes. manifesto. Yes. Is there, do you have any plans on releasing a form of manifesto that isn't just a 10-point plan? <laughs> First, Luchi, very s short answer. Yeah. The 10-point plan was a manifesto. Mm. <laughs> you know, it's, a lack of knowledge is really a serious problem mm. in, in our country. But and, your, and, you know, your opponents constantly say that that's, it's not enough. I understand. Mm. But what do our opponents understand? Mm. If they understood the economy, they would have not collapsed the economy from 7% where they got it in terms of growth every year to this year minus, maybe minus 3, minus 4. If they knew what they were doing in office, they don't know what they're doing in office. So would we listen to people who don't know what they're doing? The answer is no. The point is that uh, we say, here's our manifesto summarized in a 10-point plan. That's a manifesto. Mm. The very usage of 10-point plan, a, an unknowledgeable and non-visionary uh, team says there's no manifesto. Mm -hmm. It is a manifesto. There's a lot of detail behind that 10-point plan. It is there. We actually have a documented in black and white manifesto. Mm -hmm. Let's put that aside. Going to 2021, we've already finished revising our manifesto. Mm -hmm. We're working on it. Mm -hmm. So you will see, it may be even 8-point plan. Mm -hmm but it will be a manifesto. Mm -hmm. There will be one, a detailed manifesto, as it was before. There will be a summary, as the 10-point plan was. Maybe there will be eight, maybe there will be 15. Then there will be even a smaller one, because of the very concerns that people are raising. Mm -hmm. That will be simpler, that will be translated into local languages. Mm -hmm. That's our answer. Okay. There, there, I, I want to ask you about 
part i suppose part of what's in your in in your eight point or ten point plan or maybe it may even be a 12 point plan so i want to first of all start with tax reforms these are questions by the way that um, you know came in from a number of people um, they're not new questions, but I feel like it's, maybe it's, we need to remind people. So someone wanted to find out, they said to me, they said, you please ask um, you know, the president of the UPND yeah. when you speak to him about tax reforms, yeah. whether there will be tax reforms, and what some of those proposals and what some of those changes will look like. There will definitely be tax reforms mm. as part of our manifesto. Mm. If you look at a 10-point uh, plan that people, some people would like to talk about, they're not knowledgeable people. And, and they're only in the PF by and large, mm. right? Tax reform was there, lowering the cost of doing business. We want to increase business investment, Rochi. Mm. We want to increase investment. To increase investment so we can grow the economy, we can create the jobs, we can create business opportunities, we can support education, even for the orphans. Bana Banshiwa. Bana Bamasie. To be able to buy medicines in hospitals, because there are no medicines in hospitals mm -hmm. right now, in order to support the youth, the women, the taxi drivers, the bus drivers, the truck drivers, we will have to have to invest more to attract investment. Once we attract investment, one of the fundamental cornerstones of attracting investment is to lower the cost of doing business. Mm -hmm. What does that mean amongst many components? Yes, we will have a zero tolerance to corruption, which steals money from the public and increases the cost of doing business. We will also lower the taxes. Reduce the number of taxes, such as boho taxes. We'll get rid of the boho tax or levy so that we can actually even support people to access clean water, support Bohos support damming to conserve water for consumption, human, for animal consumption, for irrigation. We will actually put a support mechanism to encourage people to access clean water and therefore reduce diseases. Cholera, for, for an example, the waterborne disease, the hygiene disease. What else? Oh, tax out. The current taxes pays you and it's too high, 35% plus. And that money, when it's collected, the, those in government go and use it to buy a plane, expensive plane, $135 million. Those in office go and buy VXs. Instead of buying COVID-19 support equipment to protect the medical staff, they go and buy VXs. We will take away that money from the greed politicians from by, if you like, by reducing the pay as you Just as one example, or a second example, I said borrow tax, then the, the next is pay as you mm. We want to reduce the pay as year to around 2025. We're still working on our numbers, but between 20 and 25 percent. Reducing it from 35 percent, which means 10 percent away. That money will now rest in the hands of the employee, in the hands of the household. Then they can support their families. They can send their children to school. That's one of the fundamental reforms we're going to do. So then lower the, reduce the number. I talked about reduce the quantums and be able to focus more on money left in the hands of the owners, citizens, rather than the corrupt political elite and you will see more investment. It will even attract foreign investment. What, when foreign investment comes, Luchi, we will, not, we will not allow them to invest on their own. They will have to joint venture with Zambians. By what means? Just three examples. One, we are going to give land to Zambians. Anyone who wants to invest in land as a foreigner, you have to partner with a Zambian. It happens in Dubai. It happens in other countries. Number two, we will give licenses for extractive industries. What are these? Mining, timber, mukula. No foreigners will be given those licenses. They'll be given to Zambian citizens. Any foreigner who wants to work in those areas must join venture with Zambians. Number three, we'll change the law. All contracts for procurement of goods and services will favor Zambians and Zambian companies. Anyone who wants to do a business in that sector has to join venture with Zambians. Just three amongst many laws we're going to change. 
many arrangements and support this change in laws with operational procedures, tendering procedures, monitoring, and you will see a huge difference. More investments will come, Zambian investors who should anchor any growth in the economy are local people, then you will see more jobs, you will see more businesses, there will be money in the homes of the people. And are, are you confident that by creating these laws that um, you won't sideline or you won't scare away investors? And, and I only say this because of what we have currently, where it does look like um, those who are in government in a way fear investors and that's why investors are able to take advantage of Zambians and as in the way that they do. The simple answer Luchi is no. It will actually attract investment. You're talking to a person who is a business person. You're talking to a person who is a farmer. Murimi Munzano, fellow Zambians, fellow farmers. You're talking to somebody whose background is business his village, his community. All of this is meant to help the Zambian community by combining investments, needs of investor, whether you're a Zambian investor or regional foreigner, you have needs, you want to see your money grow. But we would emphasize the joint benefits with Zambians. I talk to a lot of investors, Luch. They understand what I'm saying. They're actually surprised that the PF is not doing what I'm saying. They understand what I'm saying. They know that's how it is. I went to school in England myself, part of my school, and worked there, part of my work culture, my work experience. The English are favored, not me then as a foreigner. These countries God gave us and put us in these locations, and the duty of the UPND government would be to take care of Zambians first. But we know how to do it. We combine it with investment local and foreign, and that will attract more investors, contrary to the perception. In fact, the investors are surprised that these things are not happening. So they are wondering, where is the leadership? The answer is that there is no leadership. Thank you. Okay. What about food? Um, so my, my question around food yes. is it's a bit broad. Um, yes. So it touches on issues to do with how we can ensure that people have three meals in a day, but it also stretches to inequality. Yes. And the huge inequality that is in this country. That is true. If you read some of the headlines in the papers this week alone, is somebody who is in court and he was, you know, someone was testifying over how much they've earned in seven years. You compare that to what a regular person on the street is earning, he will, it is unimaginable for him to reach those levels. I want to ask you about those huge levels of inequality and how we can reduce that gap between the rich and the poor and ensure that the cost of living for a Zambian is affordable. Yes. Very good question, Luchi. First, food is life. As water is life, food is life. Try one day, two days, no food, no water, you're gone. I was reading a story somewhere, Luchi, that you do need a doctor every now and then to attend to you when you have a headache. You do need a lawyer every now and then when you have a legal matter in court. Not every day. But you need food. You need a farmer every day. Minimum, average, three times a day. Breakfast, lunch, dinner, supper. You need a farmer to give you food, to make food available. Many people have never thought about that in that way. Farmers, food is critical. It's medicine to the body before you take a Panadol. Even a doctor will say to you before they give you a medicine prescription, they say, have you eaten? <laughs> if you have not eaten, they say, ah, first take food. That's how critical under the UPND agriculture will be taken. What do you mean? We will make sure that, as UPND, to make food available. Not just available, Luchi, to make food affordable. We have clear policies in agriculture. What do you mean? The fundamental policy to achieve availability of food, 
affordable food for the people, which also helps to close the gap between the rich and the poor, is to reduce the cost of production, agricultural production. We we'll reduce the price of fertilizer. Currently, the PF are buying fertilizer at $1,000 per ton. Plus, in quarter terms, 18,000 quarter per ton. We will bring the cost of this fertilizer down when we bring it in from 18,000 quarter per ton to 7,000 quarter per ton. Big difference. And that saving will pass it on to agriculture, provide fertilizer at a lower cost. Why is fertilizer costing at this much under PF? Corruption. Muchinyanje tikamba chipupu. Chipupu. We'll take it out as a UPND policy to reduce the cost of production in agriculture to make food affordable and cheaper, sorry, and, and available. We'll take out corruption, improve buying methods. So corruption is the only reason why? No, no. Okay. I've just continued. Okay. Okay. <laughs> take out corruption, improve the buying methods. That's the second, <laughs> that's the second point. I improve the buying methods, which means we'll buy not spot, which is ongo, timakamba spot. Sport, which means when you need a fertilizer, in Bamene, we tamanga, tamanga, to Gule, number which the fertilizer. Our, we will be planning ourselves buy fertilizer and inputs ahead of time, which is Ungu in business we say buy forward. Instead of buy sport, sport means now, manje, manje, you pay more. That Ungu manje, manje, you pay more. When you buy in accordance to your proper plans ahead of time, you are able to negotiate the prices. That's what we'll do. Number two. So all of that is meant to lower the cost of farming. And other businesses, by the way. Similar principle. For fuel, similar. Because fuel affects all the, the whole economy. So but let's let's stick with this for a for a short while because this is very important. So so we buy forward. Number two. Three, we buy larger quantities. Therefore negotiate prices. Let's leave that point. Let's go to the third point then we will be more efficient as UPND in the transportation logistics mechanism. The fertilizer going to Eastern Province will not come through Dar es Salaam, will come through Baira. And when it comes through Baira, which is next door in Mozambique, it will be dropped in Eastern Province, not transported here, and then taken back. You are double costing, the double layer. Efficiencies, I'm just giving you an example. That's what we're going to do. We will do away with what is called FISIP. We will have what is called agricultural support program, overall agriculture. Agriculture is not just fertilizer. It's not just seed. It's also cattle. And it will differ how to the current FISIP. This is exactly the point I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm just about to make. The current FISIP, fertilizer, is too expensive. We will lower it. Fertilizer goes to people who are not farmers, to PF cutters. Then they resell it to farmers. PF cutters even create cooperatives when they are not farmers. They don't even know what farming is. Or garden cut tomato kumbuyo kwanganda balibe koma watenga fertilizer. As they are doing in the COVID donations now, masks are being sold by PF cutters. Masks which we donate and other people donate. It happens in agriculture. We we'll clean up all of that. One major difference. Inputs will go to the farmers. At a lower cost. What else? It will be a total package agriculture. Because you can't you can't plant twenty acres with your hands. You need cattle because tractors are expensive. Mm -hmm. We'll give a good price to farmers. We'll pay farmers on time. We'll pay agro dealers on time. We'll pay transporters on time. Then farming will change. We'll also bring irrigation livestock disease control, and we'll agro-process. That's all part of what we call, under UPND, agricultural support programs. Agro-processing, instead of selling maize to Congo, we'll be selling milling. Mill, so that we keep the jobs, create more jobs, milling jobs here. We will transport the milling, mill, give our transporters business, instead of their trucks sitting on rocks. Very important. We will sell stock feed to Botswana, instead of selling maize. We will be able to deal with value addition as part of the agriculture 
support program. FISIP does not deal with that. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I need to take a little break for news. Um, yes. we'll, we'll come back just after 10.05, I believe, and we'll continue our conversation. In case you just switch on your radio, um, we are uh, at the residence of uh, the president of the UPND. This is Let the People Talk. We'll be back very shortly.
It's 1006. Welcome back to uh, Let the People Talk. Our guest on the program this uh, morning is the president of the UPND, Mr. Akainde Chilema. Um, before the break, we, we touched on many different issues, but I need to, let's talk about uh, job creation. Youth unemployment is still yeah. extremely huge. Um, I don't really want to ask you what the plan is, but I do want to ask you what your thoughts are on how we can create jobs. Very important uh, uh, question, Luchi. It also addresses your earlier question about closing the inequality gap. The inequality gap has grown in the last five to nine years, largely because the economy has shrunk, the jobs are few apart. Kulibenchito, businesses are suffering. So contracts are fewer, and therefore people are earning less. To address that under UPND is to basically manage the economy better, bring investments, support citizens to invest. But they can't invest now because the cost of doing business is high. I talked about it yeah. already. So we will deal with lowering the cost of doing business. We will make investing more attractive. We will change those laws, number three, that I talked about. Land belongs to Zambians. Anyone who wants to invest must join Venture with Zambia. Licenses, timber, mukula, mining, manganese licenses. Very important. So as the basis of job creation, we lay these policies that make investment attractive. Earlier we talked about taxes and how we want to bring down pay as UN from 35% maximum to about between 20 25. It's just small bits of work we're still doing around there. In the manifesto, by the way, the 2021-2026 manifesto. Very important taking away some taxes because right now if you want to do some gardening on your bowl the cost of a bowl is higher because there's a levy on the bowl when we remove the bowl tax and even support people to sink bowls and construct dams we will make water available for producing tomatoes producing vegetables producing food and other products all these are measures that we put in place aimed at increasing production, creating jobs. Very, very important. Another lay or layer for us that we use to create jobs. Because as you know, if you make farming affordable, farming is the largest employer in this country still. Self-employment and those who are in a formal job. The largest is agriculture. It's not mining, it's agriculture. So you, you get agriculture right, you're going to get a lot of people out of poverty in terms of food, out of poverty in terms of income, self-generated income, self-employment. Then let's go to the urban colleagues. We will change the laws. We will stop buying anything that we can make in this country, we'll stop buying. For example, the youth and the women and other ordinary citizens, we will give them as UPND contracts to buy, not to buy, to make desks, contracts to make all the uniforms, nurses' uniforms, police uniforms, army uniforms, all windows, door frames for our schools, our clinics, which will be bought from our youth companies who will have given capital, equipment and working capital so that they can be able to make these things. But if they make these things and we are importing them from another country, then we cannot 
Luchi create jobs. That's how we're going to create jobs, by giving contracts for supply of goods and services. I've only given examples of desks, no desks from a foreign country. They were from Zambia, made by the youth, who are idle now. All of a sudden, there's a carpenter, there's a welder, they'll be busy now. They'll be busy now. They'll be able to have income, they'll be, because the government of the UPND has changed the policies, has changed the laws. It gives them self-employment, and also they will employ more people working in the welding shops. Obviously, the assumption is that we will make sure that electricity is available. There's no load shedding. What else are we going to do, Luchi? We are going to make sure that we promote value addition. Let's take mining value addition. In Luapula, in Luapula, we have Chipatika mine in Puta, for example. Chiputa. And our people mine there. First, we'll give them licenses to Zambians to mine. But now, those who are mining, they are selling manganese at $50 per ton. UPND will change that to value add. We will put a processing plant around the manganese production areas to benefit the local people, to benefit the youth, to get jobs. By putting just a $10 million processing plant for a manganese producing areas, we'll be able to sell manganese at a higher price. Instead of $50 per ton, we'll sell manganese at $1,000 per ton. It will put more money, more jobs at the mining site, more jobs at a processing plant across the country. That's where the jobs will come from. As I said in other areas, for example, copper, instead of selling the copper bars and tracking them into Durban, into Orvis Bay, into Baira, in Mozambique, we will be able to make more copper wire in this country, the way Zamefa does, more Zamefas to process copper into copper wire. What does that do, Luchi? It creates the jobs. It creates the business opportunities. It increases the income and addresses partially the gap between the rich and the poor by closing that gap. Because those who are employable are employed. We will bring back the proper teacher-pupil ratio, which means we will employ more teachers. The teachers that are roaming the streets after graduating just support value. Get your analysis, get your voters cards, vote on that day. There are 50,000. Sorry? There are 50,000 of Absolutely. them who are on the streets, who are, who are trained, but there are no jobs for them. The plan is for them, for us in UPND, to take them into the classrooms. Mm. Because that's what we spend money as a community, as a country, to train them. That is the difference between us and those in office today. So we will take these away from homes, away from being fed to this classroom. Mm. We will do the same for the nurses. Increase, reduce the nurse-patient ratio. The doctor-patient ratio. Too many patients today are being looked after by too few nurses. But they are trained nurses. It will be the UPND policy to take this ratio down so that we can increase the number of nurses and medical staff working in the hospitals mm by supporting the hospitals, taking money, stolen money. I know, Luchi, you may ask me a question, where is the money going to come from? The money will come from the savings we make. Instead of having that plan, presidential plan, we don't need it. One or two people stretching their legs. $135 million is too much money. Maintenance cost alone. Did you know that the maintenance cost alone of that plan? $200 million, contract signed. So $200 million plus $135 million, $335 million. There is the money. The money from fire tenders, $33 million we would have saved. The money from roads, the roads are constructed at a higher cost. We will reduce the cost of roads, make it the correct cost, so that Ndola Lusaka Road would have cost us only $300 million. We would have saved $900 million, because the contract has been given at $1.2 billion. That money then will put into employing nurses, employing teachers, Improving the health standards, improving the education so, build, so, in other words, building more hospitals, building more schools, is that...? First and foremost, mm. very good point. Mm. First and foremost, we utilize the existing hospitals, mm. the existing schools, mm. so that the teachers, the nurses that are not in the hospital, they are taken to hospital. Then, what else do we do? We pay them well. In tandem, 
alongside tili kukonza hii problem we are also because our minds work differently but better versatile up sideways and we will be also looking at making sure the schools are closer to the population which answers your point of building more but there's no point to build more if you can't utilize even what is there so we'll utilize what is there but in the process puts jobs amongst the youth in the process when you make hospitals and schools working well they buy things what are these things they buy the desks the desks will be made by youth women zambian companies mm -hmm. not from a foreign company mm -hmm. i talked about it already yeah. so this is the way we are going to create jobs and reduce the income gap and also grow the economy along the way yeah. all these things are connected yeah. here's there's something i haven't heard you say speak of yeah. um and so this week alone i think it was yesterday or the day before yesterday yeah. um you know social media is awash with a lot of young people who were getting their results from one of the universities unilas mm. um, some of them were in their final year so mm. now they've got degrees yes. uh, there are those who are in their last year who are about to get their degrees yes. I mean, what do you say to people who are degree holders, who, yes. who have degrees, who can't get jobs, economists, um, whether it's doctors, engineers? What, what do you say to them that, listen, don't worry, under a UPND government, the jobs will be there? Exactly. Very connected mm. comment to what we are answering already. Yeah. Our message to you out there is you are stressed. Your parents, your family spent money to keep you in school. Hard end man. You graduate, you have no future. This is the story of the PF. But we to lose hope because the story of the UPND is coming in 2021. And it's you to put the UPND government in office. That's why earlier I said the loss you may define as a loss in a violation. It's not a UPND loss, not an HH loss. It's a loss for these youth who have just graduated and they have no jobs. But they must not lose hope because help is on the way. What help? The very things I'm explaining now. You are a nurse, trained to be a nurse, you go back to hospital. You are trained to be a teacher, you go to, uh, to, 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 to a classroom. You will be paid better. You will have job security because we will bring back a professional civil service, public sector, where job security will be assured, remuneration will be improved, and you will be able to be promoted to the highest level, Secretary of Cabinet, Permanent Secretary, because you'll be a career public officer. So they must start dreaming of those better days, but that is in partnership with UPND, mm -hmm. UPND in government. PF cannot offer that. Even people who are saying PF are trying, what are they trying? If they were trying, they were working well. These numbers of graduates you're talking about who are roaming the street, joining others who graduated five years ago, they would be in employment. The very fact that they are not in employment is a clear message that PF has felt. You are an engineer. You are an electrical engineer. We want you to be part of the future of doing away with load shedding. Too much load shedding. How? By in engaging you, private sector, public sector, making reforming ZESCO, making it more efficient, but which means now also taking out untrained cadres in Zesco, replacing them with you who has just graduated with an engineering, electronic engineering degree or whichever you know, profession you have. That's what we're going to do. That's the hope. That's why they must support Bali, they must support you know, UPND. We will create jobs, as I said, by through agro processes, value addition, agro processes. Why? We will be making sure that our, our cotton from our fields go into our ginning companies. From our ginning companies, it will go into cloth manufacturing companies. From the cloth manufacturing companies, yarning cloth manufacturing companies, they go into a youth company making police uniforms, making nurses uniforms, making a carpenter making desks, a Zambian carpenter, a welder making window frames, door frames. And the government policy will be to buy all of these and use them in the expansion of schools, in the expansion of hospitals, in the expansion of various infrastructure. Mm -hmm. My brother, my fellow citizens, listeners, this is why UPND must be given an opportunity to run this country. It is these views. It is also going to be important for us 
to pay retirees on time. A total package, you retire under the UPND government, you get two envelopes. One envelope has a retirement letter, another envelope has your package. You don't have to die before your you get your full package. Your full package. In accordance to the pension arrangement. Mm. Your full package, thank you very much, in accordance to your arrangement. Your full retirement package, then you graduate to now a pension which is paid over a period of time. Mm. But people are not getting their full package, terminal benefits mm. or retirement benefits under the PF now. That would be a thing of the past. Why am I saying that? It does lead to jobs. It does lead to income. It does lead to dealing with inequality, mm. income inequality. How? You retire, you are a civil servant under the UPND public sector worker at 55 years old, not 65. You retire at 55, you are given your package, you can invest in agriculture, you can invest in another business, then you create jobs. That is the connection. Still dealing with employment, business opportunity, and inequality. Mm. How else does it help? Why am I talking about that? People fear to retire now because they have no package. If the package is available, they will retire. When they retire at 55 years old, what does that happen? Or what does that do? Two, three things. One, it creates a gap at the bottom. In fact, before that, number one, the people who were next to the retired individual, if the retired individual is a permanent secretary or a director, it means if it's a permanent secretary, the director will get promoted to permanent secretary. The director leaves a gap here. Assistant director gets promoted to the director because the director has become permanent secretary. Motivation, succession, progression. At the bottom, number two, you create a gap now for a graduate. That's where I'm going. A graduate to enter the job market as they graduate school. The way I hit, Luchi, we want to return to the days. I graduated, I wrote my final exam on a Friday, Luchi, at Unza as an undergraduate. I rested on a Saturday and Sunday. On Monday, I had a job, a full-time job. How? Based on two things. One, on my vacation employment. So we we'll retain the youth, Mwemi Sepera, I'm a youth, my youth, Fiaba Nandi. When UPND is in office, we'll go back to the days when I graduated. When you are still at school, we'll link you to industry. You'll be able to get a vacation employment. So an employer will identify you at that stage, the way I was identified. We'll return to that level. Mm. Which, which means that Which is different from being an intern. Because uh, similar, similar. Vacation employment, intern, okay. vacation employment. And yeah. people, I, I don't know, were you being paid when you were on vacation? Yes. Yeah. Yes. I mean, that's different now. I mean, you now, an allowance. now people abuse interns. No. That is, that is, that's abuse of labor. Mm. As an intern or a vacation employee, I used to get a, a salary. And that's when I started business, which during vacations, I'll get a job, I'll get a salary. And one week before school, I would leave my vacation employment. Those days, there were shortages. I would go into Botswana and buy certain things. Like that's and then sell at Unza. <laughs> I started business as a student. My room was a popular room because there was a pressing iron. Very important those days. There was an electric kettle. <laughs> and, and, and even momas used to come around. So that's a different subject, mm. right? So let, let's stick to the issue. We will return the country, because we will run the economy better, back to internship, vacation employment, where you got paid. Something, not a full salary, mm. because you are still a, a student. Just imagine, you students out there, not just you graduates, you students, Bali's in office, you have put him in office because you've got your NRCs, you've got your voters card, you've voted for Bali, you've protected your vote. All of a sudden, you are going to be attached, attached to industry. When you are a second year, that's how we used to do it ourselves. Second year, third year, fourth year. As I graduated, I was offered a job on a Monday based on vacation employment, number one, that's the point I wanted mm -hmm. to make. Number two, based, based on my results, previous 
academic performance. The employers knew that HH will graduate, no question about it. I was given a job. By the time some of my colleagues in the same class got their results, I was promoted to read one grade and I became their supervisor. The rest is history. I want to retain the young people. Don't lose hope because I want to retain the country to those days. And you too have an opportunity the way I had. Okay. A boy from the village had that opportunity. Mm -hmm. So all of these are job creation opportunities, textiles into cotton, into nurses' uniform. Business along the way, jobs along the way, opportunities along the way. That is what we are seeking change for. It's the same in mining, it's the same in agriculture, it's the same in services. Tourism. Tourism. Only last week, I was talking to colleagues that are much willing to bring in $1.6 billion in tourism. It's a long story. But the short of it is that this is money that will not come from the taxpayer. But when they bring in that money, they will joint venture with local communities in the tourist areas, in the game areas. Local communities. The people in those areas, the headmen, the chiefs, and other investors in those areas who joint venture with experienced investors and then create tourism jobs. We will create, if you like, lodges, more lodges that will be viable. Today, if you go in those lodges, there's nothing because there's no vision. That's the vision we bring. But tourism will become another key employer. And Luch, I know what I'm talking about. Okay. I understand what I'm talking about. Thank All right. You. I need to take a, another break, a yes. very short break. Uh, we'll return just after 10.32 this morning.
It's 10.35, welcome back to... All right, it's 10.35, welcome back to uh, Let the People Talk. Our guest on the program this morning, the President of the UPND, Mr. Uh, Hakainde Ichilema. Uh, so our text line is available for you to use. Um, we only have one line that you can use uh, to get in touch with us this uh, morning, and that's 0978-895-895. Uh, so please don't, don't, don't dial the 226841 uh, number because you won't be able to get through. But uh, you can dial 0978-895-895, and you can WhatsApp as well on 0978-895-895. Uh, those are the two numbers you can use uh, if you'd like to uh, get in touch uh, with us this uh, morning. 0978-895-895 and um, uh, via the WhatsApp line 0978-895-895. Um, let, me, let, me uh, let me pick up this call. This is... Um, hello? Hello? Mr. Ngwale, how are you this morning? Fine, thanks, fine, fine, thanks. Uh, well spoken, Mr. President, my friend, my party president. It's not my intention to adulterate or you to contaminate what you have said. All that I'm saying is that instead of us waiting for 2021, I'm, I'm, I'm appealing now to government. Please get, get some of these things which this great leader, Haka in the Hichilema Esquire, had said. Please don't do so, so. But my party president, I've got one, one complaint. One complaint, my party president. Throughout your deliberations, you have not mentioned even by the slip at MIP of the time. You have not mentioned the persons with disabilities. You don't know about children, you want to want children. Persons with disabilities. People will have wrong impression about us, the UPND. They will think that uh, we are not uh, concerned with persons with disabilities. So my appeal to you, my party president, is this. Please do what uh, uh, Marawata said at one time. Directing his ministers and said, wherever you go, even if it is mentioning them irrelevantly, mention pet, HIV AIDS and persons with disabilities. That was uh, directed by HIV. So I'm appealing right, to you, Mr. 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 Uh, Mr. President, Mr. Okay. All right, Mr. Ngwale. <laughs> okay, Mr. Ngwale. Thank you very much, Mr. Ngwale. Um, do you want to do you want to comment yes. on, on on issues around people with disabilities? Yes, mm -hmm. I think that's a fair uh, uh, comment from uh, uh, Professor Ngwale. I'm very grateful that um, he's raised this matter. The matter of persons with disabilities are, are really the centre of our heart, and uh, basically. We, we, we do appreciate his comment, but uh, be assured that you are integral to all our programming, you are integral to all our policy framing and uh, implementing those po policies. When we talk about support to the youth, to the women, it's critical that support will also go to persons with disability because we are part of one family. We are one family. In our house, households, we have persons with disabilities, living with disabilities. So we are one, so we are integral. So we'll continue singling out. We appreciate that. You will not be left out. You will never be left out. Even in the cabinet, the UPND cabinet will make sure that uh, there is representation based um, on a matrix of skills, on a matrix of inclusiveness from all the provinces of Zambia, on a matrix of gender, on a matrix of youth, on a matrix of number five, persons living with disabilities. So you are integral. Okay. I appreciate that. All right. There's a question here from Morris in Chingola, and, and Morris's question is, where will the money come from? Because the country is in debt. What about the industries that we had during the calendar days? Do we see them coming back? Well, very quickly, again, Morris from Chingola, thank you very much. The money is there. This is what I've been saying throughout our political um, activism since we entered in public office, I mean seeking public office, and even since inception of UPND. This country is rich. It has resources, water, land, people, minerals. We were talking about manganese. We'll be able to upgrade the value of manganese from $50 per ton to $1,000 per ton, a lot of money. But 
Let me give you two examples of where the money is being wasted. One is the debt itself that my colleague Morris has talked about. We will not borrow money recklessly in the manner PF did. We don't need to borrow money. We have enough resources here. So PF borrowed money, expensive. That's wastage. They could have borrowed money instead of 10% or so, they could have borrowed money at 3%. We will not allow that to continue. Two, when money is accessed under UPND to be used in the revenue generating areas to support agriculture, to support tourism, to support industry, to support youth programs, to support programs for the different people living with disabilities, to support programs for women, for the poor, for the orphans. Number three, we will work on, for example, just one example, Instead of bringing Sudanese in our gold sector, we will utilize, we will exploit the gold to increase our reserves and stabilize the quacha. Very, very important. That, by doing that, it will also reduce, when we stabilize the quacha, we'll be able to make the quacha to a dollar exchange rate fair, which means we, lose, we stop losing too much quacha to buy one dollar. When PF took office, they found the dollar selling at five quacha to a dollar. Before COVID, 2019, the kwacha was selling at 15 kwacha to a dollar. Wastage of money. We will not do that. So it's very important. Another area will cut corruption. Corruption in fertilizer, procurement, I talked about it already. Corruption in fuel pro procurement, we'll cut that again. Corruption in road construction. Give you one example. How we will save the money. Just to suck a dollar road. I talked about it already. That road should cost us $300 million. PF are costing it and costing us at $1.2 billion. We save $900, $800, $900 million. That money is too much money, enough money to support youth, women, to support tourism, to support agriculture. So we will have a zero tolerance policy to corruption. Okay. We will save money. Okay. There is a lot of money. It is just the way it is being used. It is being wasted to buy planes, to buy VXs, to travel around. We will not do all of those things. We will cut costs and save money and put it in investment. All Thank right. you. Uh, do you want, also want to comment uh, about the Electoral Commission? There is a question here from somebody who wants a comment from you uh, about the Electoral Commission trying to create a brand new voter's role disregarding the previous uh, voter's role. Um, there are other issues obviously around the Electoral Commission. Yes. For example, the, the period of time for, for them to conduct this exercise. Do you want to comment on that? Yes. Yes. Electoral Commission of Zambia. Electoral Commission of Zambia is not acting correctly. One, it will not be possible to register nine million voters in one month. It will not be possible. So what we need is to continue with the existing voter register and then upgrade with new voters. So that's the way it should be. So we refuse for ECZ to do away with the current water database. They must do what is called incremental work. The six million that are there, they can register another three million. They can clean the database, but not to do it away with completely. They are trying to favor PF because now you see NRC issuance is not being done fairly. They have started with five provinces. Why? They should have done NRC mobile registration in all the ten provinces. The money is there. But it's all manipulation trying to rig elections. Zambians should not allow that. Voter registration is continuous under the law. Why are, not, why are they not registering voters continuous in a continuous way? The law says voter registration is continuous. They are not doing it because they want to manipulate the voter registration to favor the PF. We are aware of what's happening. Zambian must say no to that. Okay. Yeah. Um, 0978-895-895 if you want to get in touch uh, with us this uh, morning. Um, hello. Good morning. Hello. Morning. How are you? Sorry, your line is not very clear. Um, what, what, what you do is uh, try and call back um, 0978-895-895 um, if you'd like to uh, get in touch uh, with us this uh, morning. Hello, good morning. Okay, that's another line that 
it's also not clear. All right. Uh, all right, here we go. Hello, good morning. Hello. Morning. Hello. Morning. Hello. Morning. Hello. What's, what's your name, boss? I'm from the world, yeah. Yeah, I'm quiet. Eh, the president Munishani. The world, you go to the Munishani, man. No. The president, I am a by election guy at Pitiria. Yadena Ngati, the PF, Kuriakuma area, Zekoma, the most stronghold, Nabi in Giranomba. Anga, I know you PM. Which you like Chita, put him in the name Kunoden, Kuruakula, Nakumuchinga. Thank you very much. Do you want to respond? Yes, I think we've dealt with that issue before. In fact, at the beginning of the program, so thank you, Bamsonda. Thank you for your question. Totally, for asking that question. I think we dealt with at the beginning that uh, this is what ruling parties that are leaving office do. They want to create an impression that Navengila, so that they can plan to rig. We are aware of that scheme. I think it will not be allowed. We have a program. But I also say to the people of Zambia, they must, they must do what is necessary for themselves. Look at the question you've raised. What are we doing about northern Rapula, the northern part of central province? Look at the results in Chibale Wat, in Serenje. We did extremely well as UPND. Now if we're not doing Gilapuria, look at the Chiengi results. Very, very clear. But the important thing is that the country across People across the country, they want to change. But if you change, you can change. So, you can change. So, you can change. You can change. You can change. Do not wait for HH alone. HH is not going to be able to change. HH is only one vote. You can change. 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 This is like 1991. The campaign is for everybody. Okay. Um, hello, good morning. Hello, good morning. Morning, how are you? Hello? Hello? Hello, good morning. Morning, ma'am, how are you? I'm very well, thank you. Ah, difficulties to get through. Good morning, Mr. Chilema. Good morning, madam. This is Mombi Tiri, the Deputy Secretary General of the Patriotic Front. I have two questions for you. You talked about government people buying V8. Are you aware that even your members of parliament, when they go to parliament, that's their entitlement. They are entitled to $8,000 and get a duty fee, which they pay over the period of time. If you think the VX vehicles are so expensive, why haven't you encouraged your members of parliament to go into parliament and come up with a private member's bill? to cut reduction or they should start paying uh, to exist so that we save the money because they are part of government. You remember? There are three wings of government. You remember? Uh, uh, a large what's, number. what's the second question? Yeah. Hello? What's the second question? The second question is on the this, uh, he's talking about corruption. On the forest 27 they are members of parliament from the UPND yes. who have been elected from that land. And mind you, I was part of the parliamentarians when I was elected. And the list was going round. I know people did defeat myself confused because I said I have enough. Your member of parliament, uh, Chitaruka Sanda, she didn't also benefit and agreed that there was corruption involved. Why haven't you punished the members of parliament for benefited from that land? Okay. All right. No, th ma'am. Thank you very much, ma'am. Thank you very much. Let me see if I can try and get. Uh, let me see if I can try and get uh, more calls. Do you wanna? Do you wanna respond to to yeah. to, to her? Very this quickly. is exactly, and I'm glad that this lady is courageous. Uh, she's got a bit of Dutch courage, really, and uh, you can see that even her facts are wrong. 
And this is what PF is all about. A small number of people in PF. You have Dutch courage. It doesn't give you knowledge. Complete lack of knowledge. Number one, she's saying if we are complaining of UPND, you know, complaining of buying VX is expensive, but UPND MPs are buying UPND vehicles, sorry, VX vehicles. Mm -hmm. It's a simple thing. It's a lack of leadership. When UPND comes in, we will change the policy. We will not even leave it to the MPs. We as UPND government will change the policies that nobody will be buying a VX. It will be the government of the UPND policy. She is admitting that the PF is failing to find solutions to control costs and move the money being wasted on VXs to buying medicines in hospitals, to paying councils, supporting councils so that council workers can be paid, to make sure that children are in school, including supporting persons with disabilities. This is exactly what she's done now, and I'm very glad she has called exposing her lack of leadership in the party, the lack of leadership in the PF. That is a beautiful question, Madam Mumbipiri. Thank you to you for coming to ask a question that exposes and confirms your inability as a PF to do the right things. What are the right things? To cut costs, to cut expenditure. So it's not, your, it's not the responsibility of your members of parliament? It's not the responsibility of the member of parliament. This is why we elect government, right? If, let's put it this way, why waste time to put a members, private members in a motion which will not lead to a change of policy? Does she know? She should know that. A private member's motion in the House. And really, this is the ignorance that Mumbi Pili exhibits. And she, she loves, she has got talk time, right? A lot of talk time in her mouth. But that talk time is not backed with intelligence, right? And knowledge. A private member's motion does not lead to a change of policy. Because the change of policy is driven by the party in office. And that's what UPND, <laughs> UPND will do. So why wait for a private member's motion if you know what needs to be done? We know what needs to be done. We don't need to wait for a private member's motion. Mind you, even if a motion is put, is on a simple majority. A simple majority, the UPND or opposition will not win. It's the Constitution, Bill 10, we blocked it because it requires two-thirds majority. Mumbi Peri should know that. She understands that. When she was in opposition in, in PF, they put private members' motions as PF in opposition. Together with us, there was no policy change. You couldn't change the MMD policy. We can't change the PF policy. We can only change the PF policies by a change of government, by bringing UPND into office. Her second question. Her second question that we are talking of corruption. I'm glad she again admits that there's corruption in PF, Forest 27. She says there are members of parliament of UPND. She names one as Chitalu Kasanda. We don't have a member of parliament, you know, <laughs> in that definition, right? We, I don't know the member of parliament in that definition. Uh, maybe she knows something I don't know. The issue here is that, away from uh, exhibiting ignorance there, the, the, the issue is that she's admitting that there's corruption in the PF and she say, oh, UPND members also, you are benefiting from the PF corruption. That's why we need a change of government. And we will bring a zero tolerance to corruption. And we will not allow Forest 27 to be abused by the way, by the manner, in the manner PF has abused it. Who opened up, who degazetted Forest 27 for the vouchers to devour it? It was the PF. UPND will not do that. Simple. I'm glad Mumbipiri, you called by Mumbipiri. I like your Dutch courage, but we will help you to understand things better. PF is corrupt. Full stop. There must be a change of government. You are, you're taking too much money, people's money. Fire tenders. What do you want us to do on the fire tenders? A wheelbarrow, a second-hand wheelbarrow called a fire tender, which costs $200,000. You spent a million dollars. You waste the taxpayer's money... $33 million. That money could have gone a long way to look after the weak and the sick in society. When you steal social cash transfer, 10 months, British citizens, taxpayers give us money to pay the old, Nkote, Nkalamba, 
to, to support the people living with disabilities, persons living with disabilities, you steal the money, you steal the social cash transfer. You should be ashamed, even to call on this radio, Mumbi Piri, you should be ashamed. Sometimes have a sense of shame. A normal human being has a sense of shame. You don't have a sense of shame. You must develop a sense of shame. All right, can we people are suffering. You should be embarrassed. Okay. Thank you. Um, somebody wants to comment on the retirement age. Are you going with the 65 or 55? Uh, and then they say that because this has contributed to unemployment. Thank you very much. That's a very good question. Actually, we had touched it on yeah. already. Yeah. Retirement age under the UPND will not be 65 years. It will be 55 years old. And I've given reasons that at 55 years old, at least somebody is still strong enough to start a new life. Number one, at 55 years old, you get your benefits, lump sum, under the UPND government. You can start a new business. At 55 years old, when you leave, you are permanent secretary. It means that the director in that ministry can be promoted to become permanent secretary. Mm -hmm. because. At 65 years, it means those who are at the top levels have clogged up those who are 50. Imagine somebody saving up to 65 years old, and another a director is 40 or 50 years old. They will never become permanent secretaries. They will never become directors, because they too will pass the retirement age before the one who is in office retires. And by doing that, promoting those in the middle, you then create employment opportunities for those that are at the bottom. That's what UPND is going to do. So retire the public sector and general retirement age at 55, pay lump sum, and then pension kicks in. What else are we going to do? Create job opportunities, career progression for the young and those that are in the middle. Mm -hmm. This is how we are going to run the civil service. By the way, we will return to a professional civil service where a civil servant will be assured of the job. You will not be retired in national interest under UPND. Those who have been retired in national interest, I ask you to consider yourselves as on leave. When UPND comes into office, we'll bring back, we'll bring you back into your offices. Okay. We'll bring back, we'll bring you back into your job because you were retired and unfair. Thirty-year-old doctors are being removed, retired in national interest. Look at uh, the policemen in Sashek who were retired. Eh? Wakumuma, Wakumuma, and your friends. Uh, unfortunately, one of you died. I'm very, very unfortunate. Uh, very uh, sorry about that. You will be returned to your positions. You will be promoted. I'm saying this. Record this radio program. You will be brought back to your jobs. You will be promoted. You will be paid your back pay because that's what is entitled. You are entitled to. Thank okay. you. Uh, Rodmond talks about the practicality of lowering taxes. Won't it affect the economy? Uh, <laughs> and he says, or will you first need a few good years of maximum investment before you lower taxes? <laughs> I love that mm. question. You see me smiling. I can see you I, smiling. I, I love it. I love it. Because those are the questions. You were a bit upset earlier on, but now you're smiling. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> I, I was just strong because, you see, the, the, the PF is really hurting citizens. Mm. Citizens have never suffered like this. I'm a grown-up man. I've never seen people of Zambia suffer the way people have suffered under PF. There's no reason anyone would like to keep PF other than a small number that are eating. The SATA true PF members who suffered with us in opposition are not enjoying. Most of SATA's diplomats have been recalled. Most of SATA's appointees have been removed. So what are they benefiting? Let them join and work with us mm. so that we can really achieve the true independence. That true freedom that we ask for. Okay. This is not a joke. Right so now, in answering the issue of, question. <laughs> of a, a retirement age. Not retirement no. age. The, the of issue lower of taxes. Lower, yes. lower taxes. Yes. <laughs> this is exactly the iron of what we are saying. Because by overtaxing people, you are taking away what is called disposable incomes. By dis taking away money in the hands, let's, let's use simpler language. <laughs> by taking money away from the hands of the people. You are denying them the opportunity to save. By denying them the opportunity to save, they cannot invest. The economy will not grow. That question, the answer is actually the reverse. When you lower the cost of doing business, including taxes, you will create savings that allow investments to take place. The economy will grow, then you create more jobs. You actually, invariably, earn more tax revenue because the tax law, the tax policy is very clear. The tax theory says, if your tax is too high, it's penal, you collect less, people start cheating. And you 
punish the economy. When your tax is fair, it's affordable, people pay, they don't cheat, you collect more. Mm. It's actually the reverse of what he said. And that requires knowledge, it requires clarity and understanding. And that's what UPND and us have. Mm. And so, by lowering the tax, imagine, from 35% pairs UN to 25, 20, 25, between, I said it already earlier, you are able to save 10% from an individual. An individual saves 10%. That money now will not go to government to buy a presidential jet, to buy VXs which Mumbipiri is protecting, to dig a Z Forest 27. It will go to sinking a ball by the owner of that money, the employee. And when they sink a ball, they will grow food, vegetables, tomatoes. They produce more food. It will save someone who build a house. In rent, they will move into their own house. This is the iron of it. And more savings lead to more investment. That's how it works. In economics, if there was more time, I would have given a, a short lecture. Right? Income. Why? Minus C. Cost. Gives you S investment, which is equal to I. Sorry, gives you savings, which is equal to I investment. Mm. But I don't have time to do that. No, you it's, don't. It's for another day. <laughs> yes, cool. So, so, so the simple answer to that question, I appreciate the question. It is a reverse. The benefits are immediate to the economy, and you take money away from the corrupt government, such as Mumbipiri and her team abusing Forest 27 and buying jets and buying VXs and buying corruptly fire tenders and buying fertilizer at $18,000 per ton, sorry, 18,000 kwacha per ton instead of 7,000 kwacha per okay. ton. These are the issues. Okay. That's the difference we bring to the table. Thank All you. All right. I've asked this question to you before yes. in our studio. I've never yes. asked it to you at your residence because obviously this is the first time I've been here. <laughs> but I'm going to ask it to you. It's come by the text slightly different from the way I've, yeah. I've normally asked this question. When you were hired by government to evaluate and recommend prices to sell mining assets, did you think of what the impact the selling of those assets will have on the future job market? Thank you very much. Another same question for years and years. First, let's, let it, let, let's, let's put it this way. I've never been in government. I'm very pleased that I've never depended on taxpayers' money to live. I have no apologies to make. There are people who have lived off taxpayers' money from a young age up to the time they're 80 years old. What about other citizens? I know that question is talking about somehow mm -hmm. mines. Yeah. I've never sold a mine, Lord. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know how many times I'm going to say it. I've never sold a mine. And I've challenged people that if you think HH has sold one mine, not two, just one mine, please report me to the police, the nearest police station, after this radio program, even during the radio program, but don't go during the radio program. Listen to our answers to the question because that, you need to hear uh, a different way of running the country. Uh, go to the police station near you, report HH that HH saw this mine, arrest him. There will be no one to come and arrest me because I never saw the mine. I've said it several times. I will say it with pleasure again. The, the question, you can see where it's coming from. Again, ignorance. How could a 29-year-old young man, a 30-year-old young man, who is not in Ministry of Finance, who is not in government, how could we have the power to sell assets and the MMD government then, including then the Minister of Finance, who just exited, Mr. Chikwanda, including Edith Nawaku, who is still alive. How did they allow this 29-year-old boy to take powers that he hasn't got and start selling the assets? Because it's not there. See, this is what ignorance does again. It really supersedes common sense. I have never had the power to sell a government asset. Recently, a young man called uh, Makebi Zulu, who is MP in Mfue, said, I sold Lower Zambezi National Park. He said, HH sold Lower Zambezi National Park. It's laughable. You can see, everything is HH. So if you think HH is the one responsible for everything, why don't you allow HH to run the country? Why do you steal his votes? 
allow a free and fair election so that now HH can run the country since you accuse him of things that he doesn't know. So allow him to run the country, allow him and his team to run the country, and there will be no Forest 27 abused, Mumbi Piri. Trust me, Madam Piri, trust me. There will be no VXs in that parliament. Trust me. Trust me for once. Trust me. There will be no corruption. Trust me. There will be investigation on the Financial Intelligence Center report. Trust me. I will not buy a jet for $135 million because that money is better in agriculture, in supporting persons living with disabilities, children, weak people, and in health sector. Trust me, Mumbi Piri. We will not arrest you. Trust me. Okay. We, we will restore the rule of law. Mumbi Piri, trust me. Tell your friends who are scared of nothing. They will not be arrested. We will look after every Zambian. We will be able to take care of people because they are citizens, not because they were born in a particular area. We will not detain the journalists. We will not have thugs attacking bus stops, taxi drivers. We will not have a few thugs collecting revenues from markets because those revenues will be collected by the councils unless it's a market cooperative. We will bring law and order. We will respect human rights. Mumbi Piri, don't worry. You know that Mumbi Piri is my relative, eh? Did you know that? No, I didn't. She's my relative. Mm. It's a small world. Even when she attacks certain tribes, we're all related. I will not disclose because that will be embarrassing young people who are innocent. Her daughter is innocent. Well, I, my nephew is innocent. Okay. Right? So you, but, you just so, said you wouldn't attack anyone. Now you kind of revealed you. All right, let's let's move on. Um, I do have three last questions to ask you because I'm almost in fact I'm out of time. Um, so the first one is about your a cabinet. Everyone's curious to know <laughs> appointees, vice president. Um, and this is a question that actually came from the office. They said, Can you please find out from, from HH um, when he's going to announce whether it's a shadow cabinet? Are you ready at all to talk about either a shadow cabinet, either a running mate? Are you ready? Yeah. Let me answer that. As I answer that, just to conclude that, there will be no stealing of mukula trees. Mm -hmm. Nothing. There will be no exporting mukula and lying on the value. Mukula trees belong to Zambians, not to foreigners, not to those in the PF, a small clique in PF. There will be nothing like that. We will not allow Tuta, Tuta Road to be like that, Serenje, Mansa Road. No, we we'll work on it. Definitely. We will not allow citizens to go to jail for crimes they did not commit. Never. Never, ever. And never again under the UPND leadership. Cabinet, running mate, time will come for that. This is the wrong time. If we announce the running mate now, first, we're not there yet. But if we did it, for whatever reason, they will suffer the way I'm suffering. They'll be ridiculed. They'll be arrested for no crimes. We must be smart. So that time will come. That yeah. time will come. The cabinet, yeah. we can share the principles. Yeah. The principle which we shared already before is that the UPND government, one, amongst many factors, will be inclusive. In no particular order, mm. which means all the provinces will be on the UPND cabinet table. There will be someone from every province of Zambia, unlike what is happening now, where the PF cabinet is, is based on exclusions. We will be bringing a cabinet based on inclusions. Number two, it will be based on quality. It will not be based on your ethnic group. It will not be based on whether you are related to HH or not, or you're a friend of HH, it will be based on the quality you bring to the table. Energy minister must be able to add value in the energy sector. Agricultural minister must be able to be, to add value in the agricultural sector. The story goes on. Tourism minister. So quality, experience goes within that quality. Number three, what else? Seriousness. A UPND cabinet minister will be a serious minister. We will not be playing jokes that we see today. Committed to, the, to serving the people of Zambia. Number four, 
a UPND cabinet minister will not be corrupt. There will be no minister in the UPND government who will be in court and reports to the office at the same time. There will be no UPND minister who will do what Chiruf Shachitari did. Take cadres to take over a court premises without masking, without social distancing. What Chilufia did that day, he was a merchant of the coronavirus infection. And that's what happened at the Kafue Road, gathering thousands of people, hundreds of people within a COVID environment. There will be nothing like that. No minister will be allowed no president of UPND will be allowed, no vice president will be allowed to engage in corruption. We will lead by example. You declare your assets, you disclose your contracts before becoming a cabinet minister. Before, not after. And then you do it annually, including the president, annually. The public should know. And if people are asking, who is the owner of 48 houses? under the UPND cabinet, if you are the owner of those 48 houses, you should be able to disclose and say, I'm the owner. I bought them from this business. If you are not the owner, you are not a, you, 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 you got them dubiously, the Anti-Corruption Commission will be free. Financial Intelligence Center will be free and protected by UPND. Auditor General will be free. Drug enforcement will be free, not to be threatened and calling them a report of the Financial Intelligence Center, someone was calling it Mfiti, Mfiti, witchcraft. How can corruption end? That's the issue. It will not happen under the UPND government, under the UPND cabinet. That will go for other jobs down in the civil service will be based on profession, experience, capability, not the name of where you come from, where you were born. Because that's God's decision. Okay. Um, Thank you. So the principles only is what we are sharing. Okay. Not the names now. Not the names. Because the names, we, we don't know who is going to be a member of parliament. Okay. Last okay. time there was a confusion that, oh, only nominated members of parliament. No, no, no. A nominated member of parliament, an elected member of parliament will be the same. The pool of ministers will come from there. Yeah. Until we change the constitution, led by the church mother bodies that time, because those will be different issues. Okay. Under the current law, everybody will be treated equally oh. and the best will be made cabinet minister. Right. Thank let, you. let me see if I can rephrase the question then. Yes. Do you have someone in mind as, as a running mate? Do you have someone in mind? There are many good people <laughs> <laughs> in the UPND, in Zambia, mm. that are competent mm. enough, even better than... But do you have someone in mind? Yes, okay. there are many people. Okay. That's the answer. Okay. There are many people who are capable. No, 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 no. You have someone in eh, mind. Boy, very guy. There are many people. They, this country is rich with competent people who can be presidents. Not just the church, many. But we also know many who shouldn't be presidents. There are many who should be running mates, and there are many who shouldn't. There are many who should be ministers, there are many who shouldn't be. The criteria under the UPND will be ability to deliver, ability to save the people of Zambia, and to be servant leaders, not to be master leaders. And no. how, how do you ensure that you don't get um, bad elements into the party? Uh, and, and when I say this, what I mean is pacts, for example. These are very popular as you arrive at election time. Yeah. People enter into all sorts of pacts. How do you ensure that doesn't happen? Well, I think Zambians will help us. Mm. We will listen to Zambians. We'll use our own assessment, but we'll listen to the people of Zambia. After all, the government is for the people of Zambia. Mm. Government by the people, in terms of UPND. Government of the people, UPND government. Government by the people. Government for the people. So the people have to have a say. As I said on the Electoral Commission of Zambia. Electoral Commission of Zambia is a, is a creation of the people of Zambia. The Electoral Commission must do what the Zambians want. The police must do what the Zambians want. What people Zambians want. They want to be protected, law and order, not segregation. The judiciary must do what the people of Zambia want. Judgments must, must be delivered on time, must be dispensed fairly. They must never be biased 
because of political involvement. So even in the judiciary, in, uh, in, in, in legislature, in, uh, in the police, men and women in uniform, they will be looked after, they will be respected, they will be given job security, and they will be able to be professional officials. Okay. Intelligence, police, army, ZAF, civil servant, all of them will be treated fairly and they will not be removed from office. As I said, there will be job security. All of that is a package which that will allow us to choose the best. Okay. Me, let me give you three letters. Remember these three letters. The principle of the UPND cabinet and government will be based on three letters. One letter is M. Second letter is P. Third letter is H. So MPH. What is the meaning of MPH? One, merit. M is merit. We will bring people into government, into jobs on merit. Promotion on merit. Staying in office on merit. Two, we'll be pragmatic. P, pragmatism. We will do things that work for the people of Zambia. We will implement agricultural policies that will produce more food at a lower cost and stabilize the price of melon. Pragmatic. We will not be interested in socialism, capitalism. I've heard some parties talk a lot about capitalism, socialism, and you know, ism, humanism. We don't do business in, with isms. We do business that work, things that work for the people, that will create jobs for the children, that will give persons living with disabilities opportunities, that will give taxi drivers a license, truck drivers for five years, instead of for a, a, a short period. Renewing corruption, no. Number three, the word I gave you, number three, H, is honesty. Honesty. M-P-H, merit, meritocracy, pragmatism, number two, number three, essentially, we will be working on honest. Okay. If you are corrupt, you don't qualify to the, in the European government. If you, you cheat people, if you, you are greed, you are greedy, you go to Forest 27, you don't qualify to be the UPND government. So you can't say like what Mumbipiri said, eh? because UPND MPs, one or two have a land there, then we also have more land. It means you have no clarity in your mind. You don't know what is right, you don't know what is wrong. In the UPND, it will be very clear you are dishonest, you don't qualify to be in that business. In, 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 in the UPND government oh. or rank of rank. Okay. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much uh, for allowing us uh, time in your residence to come in <laughs> and, and have a conversation with you. Uh, that is thank you, Luchi. Thank, thank you, you very much. much. I really appreciate your being here. Mm -hmm. People of Zambia, get your analysis, especially my Yufi, get your analysis, go. Pretend to be PF when they are organizing NRS, go in there, do a don't cover, get a voter's card, turn out to vote, Protect your vote, number four. Get your NRC, number one, two, get your voter's card, number two. Number three, vote on the voting day, number four, protect your vote. The rest, leave it to Bali and the team. We'll fix the economy, we'll fix jobs. That's the program for today. We're back again on Tuesday for another edition of Let People Talk.